Well, greetings, viewers, warriors with Got That Funk. I apologize for the crap sound quality on this camera, but this camera is all I'm left with now to make videos. My laptop is completely buggered regarding video making. So here we are. Anyway, this is a video response to my friend, Kazoom Fowler, who made two videos yesterday on the subject of the sexual objectification of women and their responses to it. And in Kazoom's own words, uh, if a woman feels uncomfortable or offended or vulnerable because she's being sexually objectified by someone else. As long as the person isn't uh, saying derogatory things about her sexually, uh, she should consider it a compliment. And if she doesn't consider it a compliment, if she's bothered by it in any way, if she's made to feel uncomfortable or whatever, uh, that's her fault. Uh, she's either uptight or damaged or a prude and it has nothing to do with the person making the comments, it has everything to do with the person receiving the comments. They just need to get over it. And if they don't like being sexually objectified by strangers, in his own words, they should just lock themselves up and stay at home. Well, uh, you know, Kazum, I, I hope you know I like you, right? And uh, there's no animosity behind my candor, it is simply that. It is candor, uh, I want to stress that to my viewers as well. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily uh, hostile here, but quite frankly, these uh, topics evoke strong emotions and I'm going to be candid about them. I see that as giving Kazoom respect because I don't want to beat around the bush, I want to get straight to the point and uh, have a, uh, an adult conversation. And Kazoom, as, as I said to you in my last video response to you, please feel free to be equally candid with me. I won't be offended by it. Anyway, um, right, so a couple of things I tried to talk to you about in the comment section of your two videos, uh, but um, I just didn't seem to get through. So I thought I'd try it in video because we have a vastly different idea about what constitutes compliments in the first place. But before I get even into what constitutes a compliment, let's just talk about the social dynamic of compliments anyways. A compliment, I would have thought, by definition, is intended to make someone else, the recipient, feel good, typically about themselves. A compliment is a gesture or words which are intended to make someone else feel good. Right? If that someone else does not feel good because of the comment or gesture, is it still a compliment? I don't think it is. Despite its intention, if it hurts someone else, bothers someone else, makes someone else feel uncomfortable, vulnerable, offended, whatever, it's no longer a compliment. It's something else. By definition. If, uh, if in Kazoom's mind, uh, Kazoom, you seem to think that things like catcalling and wolf whistling or maybe honking your horn or telling someone they've got nice tits or a nice ass, uh, because those are supposedly complimentary in your opinion, that people shouldn't object to it. Uh, well, I would vehemently disagree that catcalling and wolf, wolf whistling and the like are complimentary. They've got nothing to do with making someone else feel good. It's all about the person doing the whistling or the calling. It's about making them feel good. Uh, so let's not pretend otherwise, okay? Um, you might hope to get a positive response, but quite frankly, people doing that don't give a fuck if they get a positive response or not. They're going to do it because it makes them feel good. That's the primary motivator there. And let's not pretend otherwise. Genuinely comp genuine compliments are different. Telling someone they look nice in their outfit, for example, is a genuine compliment. But again, that can be seen as objectification depending on the circumstances. And that's the thing. Uh, it's really, really dubious to talk about all this stuff as if there's some sort of black and white answers to all of it. Because every single situation is different. Um, there are different rules, explicit and implicit, in different social situations. And every single person responds differently to social situations. We're all different people. And Kazoom, for you to say that people who object to being uh, told they've got a nice ass are uptight or prudes, um, I think is incredibly arrogant. Who the fuck are you to tell someone else that their natural responses to something that happened to them and not you is illegitimate? Who the fuck do you think you are? 
you seem to think that Rebecca Watson is oh so wrong to be projecting her ideas uh, and, uh, about her uh, boundaries on everyone else, and here you are doing exactly the same thing. You're a raging fucking hypocrite on this one, man. And I just, I, I just can't let it lie. The other thing I wanted to point out, which again, I tried to say this to you in the comment section, but for some reason, Kazum, you, you seem to dig yourself in and, and, and don't want to uh, step outside and look at it from a different perspective. So I'm going to say it to you again. You seem to think that uh, repeat behavior doesn't constitute harassment if it's different people doing the same sort of behavior. So, because, you know, if you tell someone, uh, you, know, you know, if you say you whistle like that, you know, uh, and just doing that one time might not seem like harassment, but if a person has to deal with that over and over and over again every single day, is that harassment? I think it is. You think it isn't. You seem to think it isn't because it's different people doing it every day. And you said to me point blank that the number of times, how many times it happens does not change what it is. It's complementary. No, it does exactly that. It does exactly change what it is. It's no longer complementary even if they're genuine compliments. If someone tells you 20 times a day that you look gorgeous today, it's no longer complimentary and it becomes harassment because it's over and over and over again and if it's unwelcome, it's harassment. Now, you and a lot of other people seem to think that uh, you, know, you don't know it's unwelcome until, until you do it. Uh, well, I would argue that because there's a high probability that it might be unwelcome, uh, you need to pick your moments very carefully. Every social situation is different. Every person is going to respond differently. Not everyone wants to be charmed. It's just as simple as that. More to the point, not everyone is charming. I mean, you know, uh, I'm pretty good at giving compliments. And believe me, Kazum, I'm similar to you in this sense. You know, I, I would like to live in a world where you can give someone a genuine compliment and they would receive it graciously you know and, and and so forth but let's examine that a minute if you give someone a compliment like I said at the beginning it's meant to make them feel good but really there's an ulterior motive and the ulterior motive is you want to elicit a positive response and when you don't get the positive response that you hope for it is not because someone else is uptight or being a prude it is because they are not interested and they don't owe you a fucking thing. They don't owe you a smile. They don't owe you a thank you. They don't owe you anything. If it was unwanted, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't make someone a prude. All it means is you ventured into an area where you weren't welcome and that's it. You seem to think that you know if they let you know it's unwelcome. Well, it's unwelcome. If it's unwelcome and they say so, then and all of a sudden they're being prudes or uptight because they've said so. You're a fucking hypocrite. You can't have it both ways. So, you know, and last but not least, I have to call bullshit, my friend, because, uh, you know, to try to elucidate this issue for you, I pointed out a similar scenario. Uh, supposing, uh, but in a different realm of life, supposing that you had Christian missionaries coming to your house every half hour that you were at home, every single day, day after day. You actually have the audacity to try to suggest to me in the comment section that you would not find that harassment. If they were different people every day and their intentions were good, which is, of course, that's what they are. Their intentions are good from their point of view. Their intentions are good from their point of view. They're trying to save you from their point of view, right? It's positive from their point of view. And even if it's different people every day coming by, I put it to you that you would find that harassment. You had the gall to tell me that you would only find it irritating. Bullshit! At some point, it might not even take more than one day, at some point you're going to stop answering the door. You're not going to be nice to them if you do answer the door. Fuck off and leave me alone, you're going to say. You wouldn't consider it harassment? It blatantly is harassment. It blatantly would be harassment if they were coming, even if it was just once a fucking day. It would be harassment. Okay, it's unwelcome, unsolicited attention from people that you don't want it from. Right? That's harassment, okay? It's really simple. If you actually expect me to believe, I've watched your videos for eight months, Kazoom. It takes a lot less than Christians knocking on your door every day for you to get irritated to the point of shouting and screaming.
So don't try, try to pretend for one second that you would not find it more than a little bit irritating if it happened every single day, day after day, week after week, for years and years, starting at puberty and ending in menopause. Okay? So fuck off. I'm, I, 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 that's a lie. You're lying, man. And, and, and seriously, I think more of you than that. I, I know that's not true. All right? And I would just like you to admit it because I think that would be a, a, a step in the right direction, okay? Um, and every situation requires its own analysis, okay? You can't sweep all of this and say one way or the other that, you know, it's always okay to do blah, 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 or it's never okay to do blah, blah, blah. Every situation is different. And there's many situations uh, where being forward is A, expected and be more likely to be welcome. There's also plenty of situations where it's not likely to be welcome and I would argue that walking down the street is one of them. You shouldn't have to be on your guard about being sexually objectified just because you're walking through the world. Please. I think that's, you know, I think people have a right to feel bothered by that. Especially when, from a woman's point of view, it's probably been happening ever since she started developing her womanly features and it doesn't go away for years. So yeah, I think that's harassment. I understand why they are bothered by it. Now, plenty of people, myself included, uh, tend to like getting compliments. But I would argue that part of the reason we like it is because it's relatively rare in our lives. Um, when I was a kid, I had really, really bright, bright, bright blue eyes, and for years, people constantly, constantly would bring it up. Every time they met me for the first time, it's, oh my god, aren't your eyes so pretty, or oh my god, aren't your eyes so blue, that kind of thing. By the time I was six, I was like, yeah, yeah, my eyes are blue. So what? It didn't have anything to do with who I was. It's not my fault my eyes are blue. It's not an achievement on my part, so, you know, okay, my eyes are blue, and what? You know, and I, that was me as a kid, for fuck's sake, and I was already tired of it by the time I was like six or seven. It was boring to me. Even if it was a compliment, it was just boring. You know? So, yeah. Um, I, I hope you reevaluate your position on these issues. Um, I'm sure a sensible uh, ground to rest your laurels on would be somewhere be between your position and mine. Um, people like Curious, one who I like very much, uh, seems to think that my positions are based on some sort of uh, feminist perspective, and they're not. Uh, my opinions on these issues come from my four decades as an adult, or whatever, three and a half decades as an adult. And my observation and friendships with women have shown me how, <laughs> how tedious this type of thing can become in a person's life. Right, that's me. I'm done. Um, I know there's loads, loads, loads more I want to say on this subject, but I could rant for ages, and uh, I think I've made my points for this one anyway. Thank you very much for putting up with this video, and until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.